Hey guys, thanks for checking out the channel. Still working on getting real intros and stuff set up. Might be a while. Just want to give you an idea of what you're going to be watching today besides the deck rundown that follows. Uh, we were trying out the new expansion, decided to try out a Predict Yeti deck. Uh, while it is in no way a competitive deck, it had some surprising pop-offs that show there may be potential for Yetis if you actually were to put in the time to do some refining. Um, so... If you like Yetis, stick around, see some interesting matches. Didn't have the best record. I ended up going uh, three or two and three, but um, I think overall it was a pretty enjoyable deck to play. And I might come back and try to refine this and make it better sometime in the future when I'm done playing with all the new cards. All right, hi everyone. Um, Thanks for tuning in. We're going to try this bit of a meme deck. I've been kind of fooling around with uh, the build-up. haven't tried any games yet. Um, so the idea behind it originally was going to be a Yeti and an Elnuk deck, but it's really hard to find space for both of those things and still fit cards that could support those things. And so I made a little bit of changes to it, and this is what I end up landing on. I'm going to see how it goes. Uh, so we're running three of the Fallen Feline uh, to get the Hextite Crystals. I think this card is extremely powerful, and uh, I'm not playing a ton of Predicts, but even if I just draw it naturally after shuffling cards around because of Predicting, um, or um, I'm not positive on how things work when they just create things. I don't think they shuffle your deck, but if they do, that's great for us. I'm pretty sure they just put them in a random spot, though. Um, but I think this card's strong enough to at least test it and see if I can make it function in the deck. And if I can't, this will be the first thing I cut as I make changes. Um, I'm playing three Yeti Yearlings. I, uh, the card's still not super strong, but it does put two Enraged Yetis in your deck, which are very, very aggressively costed if you're able to get them in the early portion of the game. Uh, but most importantly, the Yeti Yearling is a Yeti, and it synergizes with the other Yeti cards in the deck, most notably Tall Tales, which... If you are able to uh, do in the early game, can be extremely devastating to your opponent, especially if you get a few tall tails very early. I'm um, running three iterative improvements because we want more yetis. We want more ways to trigger things like our practical perfectionist, um, and it gives us the ability of taking some cool stuff from our opponents if they are playing better units than us. Like if they are invoking for insane things, uh, maybe we just copy their insane thing and battle their insane thing with a plus one, plus one copy of it. Um, we're playing three of Shared Spoils. We want a little bit of draw. This gives us that, uh, gives us a buff, which I think is going to be important, especially because we are playing Echo in the deck, and Echo is quite susceptible to removal, but if you're lucky enough to hit him with a buff or two, he has a lot better chance of making it to leveling up, and if he levels up, he could just win you the game if you are able to draw one of his spells while you have a board. Um, on that note, we are playing three Time Tricks, in their natural form. Once again, we want draw, we want predicting. This is both of those things. It does it at burst speed. I think this card's fantastic. I think it's gonna go into just about any deck that plays P and Z right now. I think if it was fast speed, it would see less play, but at burst speed, I think it's one of the best draw cards you can play from P and Z now, especially um, since Rummage got nerfed and discarding can already be difficult for some decks to do. I'm playing uh, three Troll Chants is one of the only like true support cards I have in the deck. I think it's really important to be able to protect your Echo, especially long enough to get at least an attack off with him. Uh, in an ideal world, he'll be leveled when I play him, but I'm not playing anything with Predict that's outside of P and Z, and P and Z only has a handful of Predict cards, Echo being one of the three Predict cards they have. Um, so it's very likely I'm going to need Echo to do a little bit of work on his own level up, and if I can't protect him, he can't do that. I'm playing three Avarosian Trappers, because, as we said before, Enrage Yeti early is very strong. We're playing Yeti Synergy. This is another card I'm less sold on if the deck ends up being a little too clunky. Uh, this may get cut. Uh, it does have some nice synergy with things like Call of the Wild. You can guarantee you'll draw at least one with your Call of the Wild, plus an um, Avarosian Trapper. So in a awful situation where you don't draw your early game or maybe you don't draw your one drops and you just draw some support spells you could bank your spell mana play him on three play a call of the wild draw into your enrage yeti and still be able to play a five five on four which is still decent uh i'm playing three practical uh, perfectionists one of the only cards with predict 
Uh, we want to predict as much as possible. Also notably is it puts three copies of whatever you're predicting into your deck, which is fantastic for us. It can give us more echoes. We want more echoes. It can give us more of our protect spells if we're in a matchup where I feel I need them. It can give us more of our under-costed yetis, like our enraged yeti. Um, give us more of our bono gar guardians if we have a great battlefield going on. Uh, ha gives you a lot of options. Tall Tales is even a fantastic card if you are pretty sure you're going to be able to keep a yeti in play. Having extra copies is not bad. This is one of those cards that um, feels really good when it works and feels really bad when it doesn't. Um, I'm going to do my best to only play this when it summons a Yeti, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Um, as we said, we're playing the Echoes. For those of you who don't know what Echo does, uh, forwards you with Quick Attack. When he strikes, he creates Time Trick in, in your hand, which you had already seen. I'm running in my deck. Um, if you've predicted five plus times, he levels up. He can level in deck, which is very important because that two health is a big problem. Um, his three health isn't much better, but at least it survives Mystic Shots. Uh, when he levels up, most notably, he puts Chrono Breaks into your deck. This is kind of his bread and butter portion. His level up is okay, but it's, you're really you're playing the level ups to get the uh, to get the the Chrono Breaks. Chrono Break revives all allies that died this round, and then rallies, which is an absolutely insane effect. Even if this only gives you a like revive two units thing, and then rally. Let's say you you can't you can't attack. That's just not not a good idea to attack for whatever reason. Um, and so the rally won't help you. Even if you're just reviving two two drops, you have now net gained one mana in value. And the two drops have an ability when they enter play. Um, then that's gonna actually synergize a little bit as well, which is gonna be fantastic. Um, most importantly though, this card can just win you games because you can open attack and then you can chrono break and then you can attack again and. A lot of time, that's all you need is a finisher. Uh, hopefully, my deck is playing enough to be able to hit these consistently by the time I have them. Uh, only one way to find out. Echo's Call Shot was something I... Or, sorry, regular Call Shot was something I was originally fooling around with the idea of playing when it was an Elnuk slash Yeti deck, and it was one of the first cards I cut, specifically because it's the parallel convergence that you want access to. The Call Shot is just being used to put the parallel convergence in your deck because it... Gives you a free attack with everything you have in play as ephemeral copies, which once again, if they have effects that happen when they enter play rather than play effects, will trigger those effects. Um, it's essentially a free attack with your whole board, though, um, unless your opponent you know happens to benefit from slaying your units or something or have a bunch of life steals. It's gonna be real. It's gonna feel really good to have this if you have even an okay board of units. It does. Combined with Chrono Break, um, as they showed in Echo's video, you could have three units in play. You could play a Parallel Convergence, swing with your three Ephemeral units, play a Chrono Break, bring back your three Ephemeral units, and swing with all six units. Um, uh, you could also uh, attack with the three separately, then bring back all six of those things and rally. Like there are, uh, You can get all kinds of crazy attacks going on with that. Um, and so I'm not unhappy to necessarily have access to that called shot for the echo um because i did try to fit in the deck and i just think it's one of those things that makes echo have a little bit more value because of the champion being a little bit rough to protect um on level up he's a little bit stronger most notably though is that his time trick costs zero that is huge card advantage you get to predict and then draw for free uh, every time you strike, which if they're trading with your Echo instead of removing him with spells, gives you at least one copy of it. That's the one big upside to having him. Um, even if your opponent is able to get rid of him fairly quickly, if you can get a single hit in, you are at least getting a predict and draw off of it, which could be very helpful in the deck. Um, not super sold on Echo in this deck. I was just already predicting as much as I could, and I had some spaces to fill. The four slot happened to be open, and I said, you know what, let's try it. Um, I had one empty slot, so I'm playing a one of Howling Abyss because I kind of just wanted a finisher card that wasn't a big clunky Yeti because these Yetis, the idea behind them are is that you get them out for an under-costed value and that's why they win you the game. If I top deck uh, this this 8-drop 5-5 five five, um, in round you know, 8 or 9 when I can hard cast this, it's probably not doing much for me. Uh, my opponent... Probably has something better than it. If not, something better, something that can at least hold up with it. 
Uh, drawing more yetis is nice, but none of the other yetis are going to win me the game either. The only thing that might win me the game is just outvaluing them with five fives at that point. So I just wanted something that was a little bit more consistent value. I, I know that Howling Abyss can completely whiff and hit a unit that's not going to win you the game, like a level 2 Teemo. It's like, oh great, a 2-2 two -two elusive that doesn't shuffle mushrooms because they don't have any in their deck. But... On average, I think Howling of this can be very good, and if I need to play a one of threat, I would like a one of threat that has a recurring value at least. Uh, so that's how it landed. Up, it ended up landing in the deck. Um, also, the fact that I do have access to a handful of predicts, including you know, numerous predicts if Echo can keep going off, uh, makes me more interested in trying it out and seeing how it's going. Um, and yeah, that's the deck. So we're going to get some games in and we're going to see how it goes. Also, I think it'd be interesting to play a, uh, an Echo Dimasha deck because you have so many cards in Dimasha that would allow you to strike. Oh, we're going to go ahead and just, uh, customize our stuff really quickly here. Juicy, and then back away slowly. Heimer, that's one of my favorites though. I love to keep the Heimer available. Um, Gloomtooth is one of my normal go-tos, but uh, for this deck, let's let's get a little bit more hex techy with it. Um, yeah card back for this deck. Let's give it... Let's give it the Cosmos, because Cosmos kind of has a nice, like, blue icy feel to it, which I enjoy. And then my only uh, board I have, besides the basic one, is the Failure board. I made the decision early on when there weren't a lot of options, because I liked the music on the board, and I played a lot of Failure board. Um, so yeah, let's hop into these rank games. Um, obviously, the rank, the rank ladder just reset, so I'm playing at a relatively low ranking. But so is everyone else, unless they've already grinded up. So there's at least a chance that uh, that the matches will be a little bit more competitive. But you know, a lot of people are gonna be fooling around today. This is be a day for memeing more than anything else. Um, this guy may actually be a little bit more competitive than otherwise noted, though, because that deck. Uh, used to be really good, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be better. Um, my deck tracker is not prepared for new cards. I'm going to gamble and keep this, because these are arguably amazing if I can get the Yetis going. Okay, it looks like at least the deck tracker in Twitch is working. Um, so, this one, not going to do much for me at the moment. Um, my guess is... They either haven't updated for the expansion, or I haven't updated the add-on. Um, either way, I'm going to live with it just not functioning for me today. I don't want to have to leave the game and do all kinds of setup and stuff to figure it out. So Honestly, this isn't awful. Um, I wish I had, I had hit some early game yetis, but knowing that I may be able to get a yeti off of the trapper is uh, quite important. Uh, getting the Call of the Wild with it is even more important. I'm going to wait to play that just because uh, I have the spell mana available one way or the other. What I'll do is if, uh, if I don't have something better to play, I'll definitely do that. Especially because I would like to... Uh, hopefully get two yetis out this turn. And I think my best bet of doing that will be to play the Call of the Wild. Oh, that was actually fantastic. So the Call of the Wild probably isn't coming down because I would rather play the Tall Tales. And that's one of the reasons I waited. Yeah, they got the stun. But I get the, I get the Tall Tales now. They might have the removal for this, though. Ooh, that's fantastic for us. If they did have the removal, they didn't hit it. Uh, we're going to attack first. 
Because I think I'd rather sit on the spell mana. At least for now. Okay, and since we got a plunder, we're going to go ahead and play this. Okay, round start. We get both of these. This is a feel. This is a feel pretty good, I think. Let me just juicy real quick. That's pretty good. I think it's fair to, uh, to go ahead and do this now. I'll take more copies of her. I think that's pretty good. Especially because uh, a 4 2 for 3 is not bad when it has uh, an upside built into it. I was hoping to, uh, to hit another Guardian, but. Given the fact that I don't even have board space, I think just open attacking is the way to go. We'll see what goes on here, though. Okay. Um, nah. Still may just be the best to open attack. They are playing at least spiders, if nothing else it does stun. I, I think it's, it's worth it to just swing here. This is the worst trade I have in the entire thing. I guess that's the worst trade since it's hurt, but... I think I'll be able to generate enough value overall that it's important to, uh... To just go. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Uh, let's hope I can hit... Mm -hmm. Uh, a good target for the Shared Spoiled. That took a lot of removal from them, so I'm actually not unhappy with that. Hmm. This is a little awkward. Um, I was definitely hoping to hit an Echo or a bigger Yeti, but... Uh, it is what it is. We're going to go ahead and we're going to draw that Yeti and throw it down. And then we'll bank that extra three spell mana. Seems pretty good. Played this call of the wild. Well, I only hit uh, the one I actually rigged to the top. Interesting. I have a high enough density of yetis. You think I would have hit more, but especially after shuffling some. They almost definitely have a make it rain. It'd be crazy to not play make it rain in this deck. I have to block at least one more of these or have removal. Oh, correction, at least two more of those or have removal. TF's a battle level, which is going to be problematic. I am running out of gas a little bit. Okay. It's unfortunate that I'm about to have an empty hand, um, but my board is fairly 
threatening, especially with him at three health, or them at three health. Um, so we are going to see how this goes, and um, they're going to have a level TF, so they're going to be able to put up a fight, but their hands just about out of cards as well. They've played a whole lot of the removal cards on me. In fact, they've played all of their Death's Hand already. Um, oh, and that's an Echo. Uh, doesn't have his level conditioning, but... Having a full board when this comes down is pretty good for us. We're at pass for now. I need to make sure that I can block Swain if they're able to get enough stuns off. Because here comes the first stun, and the next stun will stun both of my bigger units, and then Echo is going to be necessary to not lose the game. Oh, the fact they hit me is a little devastating. Okay. Hopefully they don't have it in them to hit me one more time, because I need I need to not take this hit from, from Swain. If I take this hit, it's over. Because I already, uh, I already uh, like, completely committed everything I have at this point. I don't have a top deck that can win me the game. I think I'm gonna leave one because I can I can take three and the odds of them burning me for four to face is fairly low, at least with an individual card. Wow, uh, these aren't very good, but this isn't awful since that's a one cost unit. We're just gonna. We're going to play a 6-6 for one and hope that I can swing for game. Well, that, thankfully it's burst speed. That's extremely unfortunate, actually. The odds of them being able to play things to stun my units are fairly high. Um, this gets really awkward really fast. I think it's important that I have extra threats because it won't be hard for them to stun one of these and then block two of them and they can take the two and then I would lose. Please don't hit me with these. If they hit me with these, it's just over. I'm going to quickly um, add some text to keep score. Uh, we're going to attack anyway because if they can't remove this or stun this, they have to trade. They probably just have another one in hand, right? And then it's game over. <laughs> yeah, okay. What are we playing against? Okay. Uh, MF is stronger now, so this could end up being problematic. Um, I guess probably a little bit safer against this deck than some others. I'm going to keep... Uh, I don't get, you know, a big Yeti out of this or anything, which can be a bit problematic, but I think it's pretty important to have an early game with the deck, and this is an early game.
No, oh, that Valor's a bit rude. You got it, though. I'll probably, um, iterate of the Valor and try to get Misfortune with it. Since I do have a troll chant to back it up, I may actually succeed. I want the Ray Jetties in my deck anyway, so I think this is fine. Yeah, hopefully this Valor can get this hidden. Uh, a level of Misfortune is going to be pretty hard to come back, back from, I think. Uh, that Yeti is great. If I don't need the Troll Chant, I'll play the Yeti after I attack with Valor. Okay, hopefully they don't have a parlay or anything like that. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm a little bit confused by that choice, because I'm just going to attack and kill it now, right? Like, why why waste the card? It didn't... It wasn't dying until after the second blow, and the second blow still kills it. Yeah, okay. Inter interesting choice on their part. That was, uh, that was a misplay, because I had no mana. That I wasn't threatening anything else. Skill promotion, grow. Oh. Ooh, that is disgusting, actually. This should at least discourage the attacking. They might, they might attack with everything and, and taunt, but uh, oh, they didn't even attack with uh, the misfortune. Interesting decision again. I think predicting is a little bit more important than getting Echo in play right now. I'm hoping to get something that'll be really helpful. Huh. As much as I'd like to predict more to level the Echo, I'm torn. I think I'm still going to take the predicts, but getting the pluses and, the, and still getting a draw um, was very, very tempting. Actually, maybe I just open attack here and then uh, drop the Howling Abyss. The Shared Spoils is also quite tempting. There's, there's not a lot of times where Howling Abyss can come down as cleanly as this. Uh, the odds of them having something I'm going to really regret... Spending my mana against is unlikely, given the fact I don't really have answers. I have a couple cards to protect and basically no removal in this deck, so... That could be a fantastic draw if I'm able to keep this Yeti in play and hit another one. Hitting another Scatter is pretty rude. I think Cat's the play, though. Okay. Oh, another iterative for the Valor. Okay, I'll take it. Ironically, uh... You know, the best removal I've had has been using their own Valor against them.
I think keeping Katarina up for blocking is important, even if they just decide to use Valor to recall her. Yeah, this this gets her killed instead, but it forced them to not use everything and to use the Valor here. This should be okay. I, I have to not use this attack. If I attack, they have a free trade and then a, a misfortune attack. Uh, now they don't have a clean attack at least. I'm going to take the Scouter away from them, uh, but I'm going to save my Yeti. Kindred is fantastic to hit here, actually. That's quite bad for us, but... I'm going to lose a 5-2 and take some damage somewhere, but, um, uh, not even take damage somewhere, but they're in a 5. In order to level their misfortune, they need to draw a unit to attack with, and I can survive her barrage now. I think we're in a pretty good spot, actually. And honestly, the Howling Abyss is, uh, it's getting work done. Interesting. All eyes on me. I wonder if they have another misfortune and that's why this attack is uh is being processed this way. I will just make sure that I can uh, fight it. <laughs> Barrier or something. Uh I think it's game for me without unless they top pick something, right? Yeah, this should be game. I don't think they can draw a, a single individual card that can protect them from this on uh, this attack. It's just going to be an open attack for game. And this should put us uh, one one with the deck. Yep. I need to. Um, I've seen today. I figured this is going to be the popular deck for. At least a few days, uh, even if it ends up not being insanely good. I think it's going to be decent at, at worst. I think it's going to be a tier 2, but it might even make it to tier 1 because they have a lot of ways of fixing their options. Um, I think my iterative is a lot worse against them than it is against some decks because most of their units aren't going to do anything in my deck. They're going to be these extremely understated units that... Um, won't get special effects or anything for me. I can still use it for my own stuff, but the fact that most of their things aren't going to be helpful. Like, yeah, I can do a free attack for, for one with it because I'll get a plus one version, but it's nothing crazy. I think it's probably pretty important that I just hold on to the spell mana and try to do my own thing with it. Yeah, I like Time Trick a lot. The fact that it cycles itself and predicts at burst speed is just fantastic. You can search for an answer. Ooh, they hit. That hurts.
interesting decision to use that one when they could have gotten a tr like a full trade with me had they uh, used the other one. I guess they could still just trade it though. We're gonna try and attack. Yeah, maybe their plan is this they're gonna just play that thing immediately and get an open attack with it. No, didn't play it immediately. I don't know what their plan was, but we're gonna make sure that we get a blocker here. So far they've hit every time, which is pretty good for them. They definitely can't remove my Yeti with zero mana, so we're gonna play this now. It's my first time actually getting to try the Fallen V line, and I'm pretty excited to see how it works out. Especially because uh, Hextite Crystal would be very strong against their deck if I am able to hit it. A lot of the Lurkers have fairly low health. I don't want to trade the 5-2 for a 2-3, but I'm willing I'm willing to trade a 3-2 and I'm willing to be chump blocked with a 5-5 five five, uh, from my 5-5 five five or trade with this. So I think this is okay. So lurk triggers anytime you attack. It doesn't matter if um, you have lurkers in play. Is that how that works? That's a little interesting. Uh... My, my original translation of it was that uh, the lurk would trigger if a lurker attacked, but the way it's worded is just if you attack. Which is fascinating, because that means you could hypothetically play a deck that likes to predict lurkers to the top, and then just do kind of its own thing with them. Well, um... I can draw Echo or Echo, because I'm not drawing the other garbage. I can draw Echo or another time trick. Um, let's just let's just fill our hand with Echoes and give ourselves the best possible chance of going off this game. Starting with a, a free 5-5 five five at the beginning of the round is going to feel pretty good, I think. Give us a chance to actually feel out how good this is. If we're able to hit the secondary part of it at least. Obviously the secondary part of it's insane. Oh, that's actually problematic now. I think I'm gonna do this first to increase her odds of hitting one of my better cards with a predict.
I'm gonna swing with these. Because the 5-2 is easier to remove, and if I get any chip damage on the thing with 6 health, I can actually kill it later. And they're aware of that. They they played around it, which is good on them. But it, that did give me that, which is an amazing draw for us, actually, given that it's free to, free play again. And it actually uh, competes with their unit. Oh, that's pretty disgusting for them. I think I want to do this first. Okay, so you can't use her effect to give you more copies of it. That's a pretty important distinction to know about. So if you aren't playing counterfeit copies, you are actually fairly limited in how many of these that you can get out. I'm going to take this. Knowing that um, the Practical Perfectionist can't shuffle more copies makes me a little bit more reluctantly to run the crystals. Unless I'm playing counterfeit copies in my deck specifically. Which I think is better suited for the Elnuk version. But you know what? You could play this with Zillion. And I assume that's kind of the intention, right? Because you'd be playing Predict. That's pretty monstrous. Yeah, that doesn't have Overwhelm, at least. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to block there just in case they can do something to save it, because I don't want to lose the game from not blocking it. Oh, so that triggers when he levels? I didn't know that would trigger when he levels. That's that's good game. Now that I know how that crystal works, I definitely think I'm going to end up cutting it from this version of the deck for sure. I don't know what I'm going to use instead of the Fallen Felines, but I definitely would prefer using the Fallen something else. Uh, in this matchup, I think getting many, as many of these fallen felines as, the, as I can is probably super important, so that's good. Uh, I'm actually going to start with the Yeti, because there's a high likelihood that they have a one drop. Yeah. And that does not trade well with one ones, and I would prefer to be able to at least get a copy of it before I uh, give it up. I'm paying a lot of spells this game. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to, to wait for a copy of it because uh, I really don't want them to have Battlecaster for multiple turns. Cool. Yeah, that works for me. I 
I, I consider taking the Battlecaster, but I think... I think I prefer this direction. This is awkward though. I don't have I don't have any good attacks uh, to trigger the the shared spoils because they're gonna trade a a one one with this if I attack with it. They might let that through, but there's a good chance we'll just uh, block it with the arena battlecaster as well. Yeah, that baboon's great. I wonder what got cut from the deck to put the Baboon in. Because you can't really cut anything that does discarding for you. Those just are so important in the deck. Um, we're going to play this really, really passively. Right now, what we need is a means of answering this board. And I just need to be patient to get there, I think. Um, I have a much higher likelihood of hitting one of one of the crystals, at least. I didn't, but it could have been nice. Howling Abyss, I don't want more copies up in the deck, so I'm gonna have to take the Trapper. And I could skip it as well and just not add copies at all. But uh, the Trapper wasn't a bad hit, so I think I'm just gonna go with the Trapper. It may have been a better play just to iterative and play another Fallen Feline first to try to have better chances of getting a crystal. But unless they just keep poking, poking me with looses, they're not going to make progress too fast. So... Or not unless they... If they just keep poking me with elusives, they're not going to make progress too fast. So yeah, they just traded their entire battlefield except for their elusives. It's unfortunate I don't have a ton going on right now, but I should be able to reload a little bit uh, with my Call of the Wild. There's no way they're going to trade a Draven for this, so I'm swinging. And if they trade an Elusive, I'm pretty happy. That's not too bad, actually. Be able to play a 6-6 a six, six that they're almost certainly going to pull. Oh, wow. Okay. Four, six, eight. Yeah, that hurts, but if they don't have the burn, we're not in an awful spot now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually spend the mana now on the Call of the Wild, because if I hit another Abominable Yeti, that's massive. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I wanted. This is huge for us. We just went from a board with, of, of a 3-3 three, three to a board of four six sixes and a 3-3 three, three in one round. And that's kind of what we're hoping to do with this deck when it does go off. That's quite unfortunate for us. Uh, things are not looking great. Come on. None of these are going to save me, so I need to skip and just hope I hit one of my actual removal that I shuffled in. Nope, that's game. And it really feels like the type of thing I'd rather run a counterfeit copies 
to ensure. That's a pretty good Yeti hand, though. I think I have to just keep what I have. I was originally going to save the spell mana, but I think I need to play the Shared Spoiled. And since they're Demacia Freljord, it's very unlikely they're going to be able to remove my Yeti in response to the Tall Tales, especially if they don't play a unit to fight with it. Yeah, perfect. They might just be playing a, a ramp deck in general. I'm not just being indicated by that, but... A lot of ramp decks uh, really like Trundle right now. I don't think we want to give them a chance to do anything, uh, even though we're not threatening lethal quite yet. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's play it. Let's throw in the lethal. Uh, they probably have frostbite cards in hand anyways. And this will get that little bit of extra damage in play. Because if they're gonna if they're gonna frostbite this stuff, they're probably gonna sit on the spell mana anyways. And if they play a blocker, it's unlikely that it's gonna trade up with the five five. Worst case scenario it'll be probably a pretty fair trade. Yeah, so they're gonna frostbite is my guess. Oh, or they're just going to lose the match. Okay. I'm really glad I gambled on that then. That's our full five. Um, we ended up being two and five with the deck. Uh, so yeah, it could be worse, could be better. We're going to go ahead and uh, move on to a new deck. I think we're going to keep playing around with Echo for now. We're just going to make today kind of an Echo day, at least for a few decks. So, uh, new deck. 